This is the Bastinelli Knives, Bastinelli Creations, Silence Slim. This is a loner from This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Dave, if you don't know Dave, check out his channel. I'll leave the link in the description below. This Old Sword Blade Reviews, he's a, uh, a collector. He's got an awesome collection. He's also a uh, Filipino Kali expert, uh, trained with some of the greats, and has a... Uh, a great perspective on knives one that resonates with me and we have very similar tastes in any case uh he sent this one along to me and uh very happy he did i've always admired this knife from afar i love the shape of that blade uh, that blade reminds me a bit of a filipino taliban uh, except it, it's got a straight back but that deep recurve um and fat belly leading to a long, thin, tapering uh, thrusting point. I just dig this design. Uh, but when I read about it on the various websites and such, they, they claim, uh, well, I shouldn't say claim, that makes it sound like it's false. But for instance, Knife Center talks about this as being a great EDC, and I could see that because I like to carry these kind of knives, uh, though the handle seems a little long for that. Uh, but they also mention a great outdoors knife, and I believe it. I do, uh, I, and I believe Bastian Cove had some designs on this being an outdoor knife. He's got a couple of runs of jimping here, here for saber grip if you're fighting, here for Filipino grip if you're fighting or making feather sticks or something, and then here if you're doing some sort of, I don't know, skinning or something. Uh, or making small holes. That's what they say on the website. To me, this is just kind of ridiculous. Uh, obviously, this is a uh, sort of more of a fighting knife, self-defense knife, martial arts knife, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with that point and the crown spine and all this, it just does not seem like an outdoors knife to me. Uh, but doesn't have to be because it makes a great one of these knives, whatever it is. I keep getting fingerprints on it. It's driving me nuts now. Ugh. Uh, let's see. Maybe that's a little better. Okay, so this is made in Italy by Fox Knives. Uh, it's N690CO steel. It's kind of the ubiquitous Italian knife steel for almost everything except the super high end. It's always Bowler and N690. Uh, it's a good steel as far as I can tell. I Like you know about me, I don't really push my steels to their, uh, to their breaking point. So um, I've had good experience with it uh, because I've had good knives made of N690CO. Uh, I like this particular one because it has the serrations. You don't hear me say that often, uh, but in this case, um, I really like them. I think they add something to this knife, a uh, an aggressiveness that's, um, that's already there with that deep recurve, but just adding those teeth just makes it... Uh, makes it even more menacing, I guess we'll say, but also probably more useful too, if you wanted to use this knife for various applications. Uh, I could see the benefit. Anyway, uh, there's his maker's mark, him being Bastian Cove of Bastinelli Knives, and uh, he just always designs an elegant, beautiful, wicked, um, menacing, looking knife. I mean, he has all of those characteristics and this is, you know, this is a perfect example of his work. I like how um, on many Italian knives, Fox and Lion Steel, and definitely in the fixed blades of, uh, of Bastinelli, uh, the tang of the blade sits proud of the handle slabs and then they crown it over. It's just a very pleasing look and feel. It feels very good in the hand like that. Uh, though I do wonder in the cold whether this conducts, uh, this style of handle with the proud tang conducts more cold than if you had it uh, parallel or even with the with the micarta. These are green canvas micarta handle scales. Uh, I, I love the micarta that Fox and Lion Steel uses. I think they use very nice micarta. Um, I like the little milled uh, grooves there. They work great for additional gription. Uh, believe it or not, your fingers really do sink into those. They're, they're not much, but they add a lot. 
And then of course the texturing of, of canvas micarta with the wider threads and the wider voids between the threads also adds a nice uh, sense of friction and grip there. Uh, Bolt-on handles there, you can remove it. And uh, I, I do know that if you do remove it and, and, and go without the scales, it will not fit in the sheath anymore. Um, or it'll fit, it just won't stay in. A little pinched uh, back end. I love that he adds jimping on the uh, pommel. Uh, I like to hold the pommel like this. You know, if I have it in reverse grip, I like to have my thumb there. And it's nice to have jimping. I talk about that a lot. Uh, almost no one puts jimping right there. Frequently people put jimping here and here, which is also useful. But I always thought right at the end is perfect for the thumb engagement like that. But uh, Bastion Cove does uh, Filipino martial arts and other kind of training. So he's not just a knife designer and maker. And uh, uh, he's a, a practitioner. And you should see him with a knife if you haven't already. He's, he's pretty uh, impressive. Uh, lanyard hole, and uh, that's about where it ends. Um, so for this to be a perfect knife for me, so now this uh, length and this length, the cutting edge and the handle length are exactly the same, I think 4.62. And um, it's very pleasing to my eye. However, uh, to make this perfect for me, I would want it substantially, maybe not substantially, I'd want it a little bit shorter. Um, because I generally tend to find that my fixed blade knives, that it can have a long blade like this, a five inch long blade, uh, and I will carry it as long as the handle isn't too long and jabbing into my ribs because I wear it in the waistband and, you know, I have to keep it under wraps and such. Uh, so the shorter, the better, the rounder, the better. Um, all of that being said, I still want to be able to get a full four finger grip, but I, uh, you know, if you... If this one were that short, I could, though this that would not be ideal for many people. I have medium-sized hands, and there are a lot of people with much larger hands that would want that room. So that's just a wish list kind of thing. Um, haven't used it for anything and won't, but very sharp. Looks like Dave may have strapped this edge. Uh, the teeth are just in perfect condition. Like I said, I like the the extra jimping there. Uh, just a cool knife and, and a very nice sheath. Uh, it just sort of sucks the blade in after a certain point. It's very nice. Um, I'm not the hugest fan of the old tech locks. They're big and bulky to me. I definitely prefer... Um, huh. Well, there isn't one right around me, uh, but I prefer the uh, discrete carry concepts uh, style more simple, small, thin, uh, and I like in the waistband. All right, let me show this with a couple of uh, fixed blade knives and uh, of, of like sort and see how it compares. Okay, so first with a, a couple of classics. Here it is with the USMC K-Bar, uh, classic, combat classic fighting knife here. So you can see it's, it's much smaller. The K-Bar, you know, is not that necessarily easy to stash in your waistband, but uh, this much more so. Look at how slender it is, by the way. Nice nice and slender. Here, we'll compare it to the K-Bar. In every way, just way small, way smaller, and less capable in terms of all the utility stuff this can do, you know, prying stuff. But this is a, to me, this is a fighting, little fighting knife. All right, I've established that. Let me show it with another classic. Uh, one I love, the Buck 119, just a classic, beautiful clip point hunting blade, outdoors blade. And um, a lot of people have this one, so I figured it might be good for size comparison. So also much uh, larger than the slim, than the Silence Slim by Bastinelli Knives and, and Fox Knives. Also much, much thinner. I always thought the 119 had a particularly fat handle. Um, but very comfortable. All right, so those two classics out of the way. Now let me show it with a couple uh, Fox, or not Fox, but Bastinelli knives. I have uh, three myself. One of them is in the car right now on my work ID. That's the diagnostic. Uh, but here I have the uh, big Dragotac, which uh, 
I mean, needless to say, one of my one of my favorite folders of all time. Beautiful big uh, bellied Warncliffe or Sax style blade with a you know with a big titanium frame lock and just awesome ergonomics. Tall, very thinly ground, made by Lion Steel in Italy. Just a great knife, you know. And uh, this was difficult to find. They're coming back out with more, I believe, uh, soon uh, this year. And then this is my custom anomaly, a custom sheath from uh, Bastien. It's not the fox sheath. And then he wrapped this in uh, maroon cord wrap. Uh, and that is the custom aspect of this. Very, very cool Picall style Karambity knife. Uh, so these are my Bastinelli's. So that's kind of a comparison. Um, let me close this, sheathe this, and then I'll show it with a couple of like-minded knives, two like-minded knives in particular. The first, also designed by a classy and deadly Frenchman. This is the Fred Perrin designed um, Street Bowie. This is a, pretty much the same dimensions. Um, very, very, very similar dimensions. Uh, Fred Perrin um, I, is a former French commando, current badass, just knife fighting and making and designing uh, phenom. A lot of his knives feature this sort of um, uh, sort of setup where the blade is wider than the handle and the blade itself acts as the as the guard. That is something you see in a lot of French cooking knives, also in a lot of traditional French fighting knives. And he brought it forward into this more modern style Bowie. I love this Spyderco. I carry it. Uh, I carry it in my PJs even uh, right in the waistband. Uh, it's light, thin, capable, and you should never be unarmed. Okay, so that's the Fred Perrin um, Street Bowie. And then here is one that I just got that I've been wanting for literally over a decade. Uh, this is the the Coban from Cold Steel, and uh, it's, it's Aus 8. It's got this super toothy but sharp edge. I am not going to re-sharpen this until I do a video on it. I want to kind of show that. Uh, I don't know how many generations uh, hence the Coban is, but I remember my sister had some creepy guy interested in her years back, and I bought her one of these to keep by her bedside. And um, it's just a classic, awesome, thin, light um, fighting style knife. Pretty much the same dimensions as both of these. Uh, and if you look, uh, the slim is still, well, it's about as slim all the way through as it, as this is at its highest points, fattest points. So these two are great. This is, uh, I mean, I think this is great so far. I haven't really banged on it yet, but uh, I just have always loved it. And it's a, uh, a design that has been with Cold Steel, a model has been with Cold Steel for a long time, and it's very inexpensive. Um, so if you need a little a little pig sticker like that, I highly recommend it. This is a bit more expensive, uh, VG10, but also a great knife in this sort of universe. Uh, well, it is with a tear in my eye that I draw this video to a close, because that means it's a little bit closer to getting put back in a box and get sent back to my good buddy Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Be sure to check him out. Be sure to, to follow him on Instagram. Also follow Bastinelli Creations, Bastinelli Knives on Instagram. You'll be doing yourself a favor. He's uh, A, extremely prolific, puts up lots and lots of pictures, beautifully taken pictures, and then lots of cool videos of him testing and using his uh, really cool knives. So check him out and uh, well, I'll be talking at you later.